All right, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're at. Welcome to a Friday. A beautiful uh, day out here in California right now. It's supposed to be about 90 degrees or so, a little bit cooler than what we've been seeing. It is uh, Friday, July 28th, 2023, about 11.36 a.m. here, West Coast time. And it uh, looks like we have a 2.2 into the area of Northern California. That is the latest quake here on the globe. Also notice uh, continued earthquake activity here across the region of Honduras in this bay. Uh, that is the uh, area where that's been seeing a pretty significant earthquake swarm down here in this little Gulf of Fonseca area or Golfo de Fonseca. This region right here definitely seen uh, some earthquake activity still within the last 24 hours. Here's the latest map here from the EMSC showing that area of interest. This is the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. And still notice we got this uh, region here in the Gulf just uh, still showing some earthquake activity. Now this pattern, I talked about that last night. I believe this is just how the EMSC model creates it. Um, it looks like it may be, you know, a pattern, but I think they do this so that it doesn't um, stack on top of one another, similar to this, right? But when you go down to really view it, that's about as close as they let them get out. Because I've never seen earthquake activity that is in a grid pattern like that at all. So this is strictly the developers there of this app that created. Uh, that's just how it looks when there's a swarm when you zoom in. So not those earthquakes aren't happening like that. Uh, but we are seeing some migration upstream here closer to the Middle America Trench. It's southern end here. You can see the subduction zone just offshore dangerous area in terms of uh, accumulated slip rate and stress and big earthquakes uh, also a little bit of activity around this region this still looks like to me some type of plate stress in the area uh, last 48 hour map is working notice a couple different clusters here uh, closer to the bay and a little bit further to the subduction zone level itself last week of activity shows a couple different uh, larger earthquakes as well we did have a six or a 3.3 i'm pretty certain that we had a uh, six pointer somewhere within this area. Um, that's weird. The three is bigger than the than the uh, four, as far as that circle goes. Let's see here. One of these is uh, the bigger quake. Either way, I believe that uh, this is purely plate stress uh, at best here within the area. Um, you know, but also at the same time, it could be affecting volcanic uh, activity down below into the subduction zone because there are numerous volcanoes here in and around this bay area there's a beautiful one right here with some type of lake in it uh, laguna that looks awesome right beautiful spot to live i don't think so not in the middle of a volcano uh, but this swarm is occurring out here in the bay and a couple different areas upstream around the subduction level itself so we'll continue to watch that uh, we did see a little bit of further movement upstream into the middle america trench of 4.0 that one coming in about 3:40 in the morning uh, so still activity on the heightened sense out here across the Middle America Trench. Notice that cluster. In fact, we got a 2.5 just coming in right now to that same area I was just talking about there into the Gulf area uh, around Honduras here. El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua area. All three kind of meet within that zone somewhat here, at least on the map. And uh, we'll continue to watch that. Uh, I don't think we're done yet. Maybe a slight slowdown has happened in the last 24 hours, but it's still active, as you can see with the latest quake there, a 2.5 on the map. All right, let's go ahead and check out the North American continent up here. Texas area, of course, is very typical across the oil fields of Texas. Not going to zoom into every single earthquake, but we all know they're very close to some oil fields and uh, wastewater disposal operations out there in the Texas area. Uh, one earthquake out here near benton city washington this is a 2.1 outside of kennewick kennewick area this area has seen some movement here it's up against the hills horse heaven hills it looks like uh, there's some fault systems that do run through here and it looks like that's just somewhat has been somewhat active here over the past couple months with sporadic small earthquake activity uh, when it feels like having them uh, some twos going on across northern california southern end of the cascadia subduction zone a 2.1 latest there 16 kilometers deep uh, the rest of northern california a little spotty uh, bay area showing one 2.3 near vallejo 10 kilometers deep that is just off of this fault system right here the west napa fault zone 
couple different uh, segments of that. This is a uh, little scattered fault system area here on the North American side of the plate boundary. Of course, the San Andreas Fault sits here in the red. A lot of uh, clustering and fracturing here of the, uh, the faults as it heads into the uh, North American side of the plate boundary. Uh, further down south, as I mentioned, a little spotty. Southern California not showing too much activity here today. Uh, a couple smaller microquakes throughout the area. I'm not seeing any major swarms across California currently or the West Coast anywhere. Uh, but we'll continue to watch that, right? Keep an eye on the area down south for sure. Uh, doesn't look like we've seen any further adjustment up here across the uh, Puerto Rico Trench. The last one was a 2.2 in the swarming area here around the Mer Merotos Trough, about 13 kilometers deep here into that uh, little trough zone. Uh, aside from that, the Caribbean plate looks fairly quiet, uh, you know, except for this area across the Middle America Trench, the western side here of the Caribbean plate. South America region, uh, what do we got? 4.8 coming in right now. Well, looks like about an hour or so ago. Not for sure why it does that. Bounces back and forth between quakes. That's what happens when I have two agencies here on the globe. EMSC and the USGS, but a little bit of activity here across Chile today and activity across the South Sandwich Trench showing some elevated movement right over here. The last one, a uh, looks like 4.8, 32 kilometers deep, like I say, about almost two hours ago, my time. Uh, this area definitely been showing some elevated movement here over the last week. As you can see, there's the list. Bunch of fours and even a 5.3 in here. Most of this is around the... Uh, middle to the south edge here of that subduction zone but we'll continue to watch that as we have seen a little bit of activity across the atlantic ocean and the divergent boundaries that does add further strain out here across the areas of the south sandwich islands region uh, there's an earthquake there from yesterday 5.1 uh, way out here in the southwest indian ridge that earthquake almost a six pointer almost 5.9 uh, about uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, my time, stirring things up out here. Uh, should see, with this type of divergent boundary activity along a fracture zone, that should amplify conditions out here. Uh, potentially up north, where we have been seeing a little bit of swarming off the coast of Yemen. It's been very quiet there for now, but uh, last time we've seen that activity stirring up. Looks like there's more than just one earthquake down there. USGS only reporting one, it looks like, right? Unless I'm... Oh, they're clustered. Okay. They are reporting them. Goodness. Uh, looks like four earthquakes, at least of some considerable size there. The largest of 5.9. And with that being said, definitely need to watch some areas uh, further upstream here across the African uh, area up along these uh, plate boundaries. Should amplify. Mediterranean here, relatively quiet. A couple smaller quakes across the region today. Nothing big going on. Uh, there's that activity across China yesterday. There's that cluster we're looking at. It's almost a daily thing here across this region. But if you look at the plate dynamic map, uh, this whole area, you got movement coming up here from the south northward. You got the Pacific plate heading west, west northward. And it's just, you know, it's all reinforced. And it's just, uh, if you could pick a spot on the globe that has the most earthquake activity, this would be it. <laughs> Not even joking. Just the way everything's set up. Everything's pulled around, twisted, subducted, uh, new land being formed. It's just, it's always active like that. And there's no doubt some big quake activity that does build up here. But for now, quite a few threes and fours across that region. Uh, not, not showing up here on the USGS map, but that's why I run the EMSC here on the globe. Specifically for that matter, so we can watch this swarming activity, which is just around the Philippine area, southward. Uh, we're looking at a little bit of migration here west of the Vanuatu area, trying to. This is our quiet zone. It has been here for a couple days with bouncing back and forth activity between Tonga Trench and, and the uh, uh, Vanuatu region. Let me pull this up here. Uh, we've been seeing a pretty good swarm of activity around Vanuatu. That's this area right here where that cluster has taken place. 6.4 was the largest. This is relatively shallow earthquake activity. Uh, it seems like when this hits... Then we get that back building of deeper momentum and pressure. Uh, and of course, in this area, you're looking at the northwestward movement of the Pacific plate and that momentum, so to speak, along this plate boundary. Uh, so if there's not enough strain stress built up here, 
We'll watch that momentum sometimes migrate around that plate boundary with the bouncing back and forth here of deeper movement quakes followed up by surface earthquake activity. And it looks like it's trying to stretch around the Solomon Islands with the latest one here. Uh, looks like a 4.4 coming in this morning at 65 kilometers deep. But we're still getting, uh, in, within the last 24 hours, we're still getting that deeper movement activity here. Uh, within the last hour and a half, that 5.0, 590 kilometers deep. Did have some activity earlier this morning as well. But notice that activity bouncing back and forth in between these two deep quakes, Vanuatu and Solomon Islands, right? They're having that back and forth game here. Of course, that makes sense. Deeper movement uh, obviously spreads some stress across this plate boundary, and that's exactly what we're seeing. Uh, but with this quiet zone here across Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands area, I expect that to fill in uh, pretty soon. They can't play this game of bouncing back and forth forever. Um, through the Kermadec Trench, things look pretty quiet. Um, and New Zealand does as well. Let me run over to the GeoNet servers and check it out. Not that one. Did not want to. This is the uh, Near Earth Objects. Fortunately, we don't have to look at that for right now. Uh, GeoNet. 3.0 from yesterday. Let's bring up the all magnitudes map here for New Zealand. A couple smaller quakes, you know, that's just like along any major plate boundary, Alaska, California, wherever you're at, there's always going to be small microquake activity. Uh, but far as any moderate, even minorly moderate, there's just not a lot of activity kicking up here. Did have a 4.8 way up along the Kermadec Trench, it looks like, about three hours ago. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out the earthquake drums here for New Zealand. See if there's anything that we're missing. Uh, three hours ago, there was that four-pointer, right? Well, even on the northern stations here, I'm not even really seeing it. Maybe this, maybe this area right here. Uh, but for the most part, as you can see, activity from last night and yesterday. Over the last 10, 12 hours, though, looks uh, fairly quiet as far as movement goes. A little bit down here in South Island, it looks like that may be a two-pointer. I can say these are very typical to see along a, a plate boundary, but no large-scale movement taking place yet. Uh, the Alaska area up here, a little minor movement going on here. 2.5 map and above shows a 4.5 hitting there. The Aleutian Trench earlier this morning. Uh, that was followed up here by a 3.9, a little bit further along that uh, plate boundary here. Uh, so we'll continue to watch this and see how the earthquake activity plays out here today. Uh, space weather activity, goodness, had a beautiful, absolutely beautiful eruption here of plasma registering a M4.1 just a short time ago. This was on the northwestern limb of the sun, directed away from Earth. Uh, now I did pull up the movie here. This is actually quite uh, awesome looking. Let me see if I can turn the speed down even slower so you guys can see it. Look, Take a look up here across the northwestern quadrant here. It's a beautiful image. Watch right here. Now it's really slow, so hold on. Right up here, northwestern limb. Ooh, look at that. Boom. That was absolutely beautiful looking. And, uh, of course, Kevin got a capture of it here on the Solar Ham site. Beautiful imagery. And uh, that was not directed at Earth at all. So what do we got? Uh, there's, that, there's that eruption right there. It registered a, an M-flare. <laughs> Pretty awesome looking far as the energy goes um what do we have for right now let's go ahead and check out the uv filter array here and um looking at a, a whole bunch of newer sunspots coming around the eastern limb of the sun that's these areas over here um these do they need some monitoring because they're get, they're getting pretty complex out there uh i can't really tell on the uv filter array here so we're going to go over to the magnetogram image and this shows you the uh, diverse sunspot regions here with uh, different magnetic cores here within this one. This one's been growing pretty nicely uh, since it was born here a few days ago on the eastern limb. Uh, and down here, it's center disk almost, uh, getting a little bit more advancement and growth within this sunspot. Uh, and a couple other newer regions around the bend, about ready to make their, uh, their way across the stage, so to speak. 
So we'll watch this whole area out here for right now. You can pretty much draw whole region around here for some further activity. That uh, region that did shoot off that plasma earlier this morning is not even visible, but that just goes to show you how huge of an eruption it was. I uh, can't even see the region that uh, produced that uh, that flare or that uh, plasma that plasma eruption. Pretty awesome though. So we'll watch this. It looks like overall threat right now. Let's go check it out here. Keep going backwards. 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 35% chance, X flare around 5%. There's all of our sunspots currently, mostly alpha and beta magnetic structures. But like I say, some of these are growing. We definitely need uh, need to keep an eye on a couple of these. No major aurora forecast here for the extended future. And uh, we'll just kind of keep an eye on this and see how it plays out with the sun. Severe weather today. Well, pretty lengthy up here. For an enhanced risk with a 2% chance for tornado probabilities across Chicago, Milwaukee, Wisconsin as well, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Madison, and Des Moines area all seen uh, potential for uh, some severe weather. I think the majority of this severe potential is going to be hail related there in the dashed area around the Cedar Rapids, Iowa area. All this region right here in the dash has a potential to see 10% or greater probability of 2 inch diameter hail or larger within 25 miles of a point. So this is the greatest area uh, for some large hail today. Of course, you can get some large hail outside of the zone, but as far as the mixture, the dynamics, the weather setup today, that's what they have marked here uh, for, the, for at least the uh, most severe weather. And uh, looks like that's going to continue over the next couple days. Here in California, we're just... Uh, you know, we're not really cooking. Uh, like I say, it's only supposed to be about 92 today, I believe, or 90. Uh, it's 82 currently here outside. Not that big of a deal. It's really not. Um, so let's see what we got. And the reason why is because high pressure kind of scooted over here around the Four Corners area. We do have some low pressure uh, activity off the coast of the Pacific Northwest. And that's kind of scooting that high pressure just slightly to our east, which is allowing us some eh, somewhat normal temperatures out here. We're not cooking with 110 or 115. And that appears to be the pattern for a little while. Uh, looks like maybe the, the first or towards the second week, uh, well, the end of the first week here in August, things are going to start cooking, at least as far as this weather model goes. But it doesn't look like it's going to last too long. Uh, either way... Uh, I'm definitely enjoying this weather. I'm going to take advantage of it by cooking up a beautiful brisket. Like I say, it should be yummy. should be pretty good. Uh, I put it on here about 35, 40 minutes ago. Uh, it'll be ready probably here in about 10 or 11 hours. A 15-pound brisket smoking with uh, some mesquite wood chips and, and mesquite pellets. To keep everything uh, smoky out here for the neighbors. That way they can enjoy the enjoy the barbecue too to an extent i don't think i'm going to invite anybody over but uh, i don't know we'll see all right uh have a good one here folks i guess we'll catch you guys back here later tonight live seismograph stations all look fairly stable not a whole lot of um uh, no, really no unusual movement taking place out there. Let me check Yellowstone here real quick and see if we had anything stirring up overnight. Keep forgetting there, but uh, looks like a little spike of an earthquake late last night. That's going to be this activity here. As you can see, a handful of very small. I, I don't even think the USGS worries about these very small ones. Those are pro probably all under 1.0. So um, that's about it, though. Not a whole lot going on through Yellowstone for now. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here later today. Uh, if not sooner, if something major happens. But we'll keep an eye on things. Have a good one. Live stream is back up and running. And um, enjoy your Friday. Please stay safe out there, everyone. Take care.